Hi, my name is Michael Otts and I'm an author and speaker based here in the UK. And over the last year, as I've given talks about the Christian faith, one of the biggest questions that has come up is this. How can you believe in a good God in the light of all that has happened? As we have witnessed a global pandemic claim the lives of hundreds of thousands of people, as we've experienced the pain and the isolation and the anxiety of lockdown, as we have faced the uncertainty of jobs being lost and a future that seems unclear, how can you believe in a good God? There was a French poet called Charles Baudelaire and he once said this, if there is a God who created the world as it is today, that God must be the devil. I wonder what you think of that. I think he was onto something. Because what kind of God would create a world like the world we live in today? A world full of injustice and suffering and pain. Physical pain, emotional pain. What kind of God would create a world as it is today? And how could you believe that that God was good? These are a big questions for the Christian faith because the Christian faith affirms that God is good. He's not some distant deity. The Bible says that he's good and he's loving. But how do we square that? How do we reconcile that with the world that we experience and we live in today? Well, one of the things that we want to say is this, that the world we live in today is not the way it once was. The Bible says that the, God, the world that God made was good, a world without suffering and pain, a world without pandemics and lockdowns. And into that good world, God created people to enjoy him, to enjoy each other and to enjoy that world. It was a good world, a good gift from a good God. But God gave those human beings a choice. They could live in that world his way as it was intended to be, or they could live in it their own way. And the tragedy, the Bible says, is that humanity took that free decision that God gave us in love and we chose to ignore God and live in his world our own way. And so often the consequences of those decisions that we make have brought pain on others and pain to ourselves. And the Bible also says it's brought pain to our world. Our entire cosmos is broken the Bible says it is groaning in pain because of what has happened to our world. Because we've disconnected ourselves from the God who created us. Our world is not the way it once was. It's not the way it should be. And I find that quite helpful as a Christian. You see, if I were not to believe in God, if I was to say that there was no God or no supernatural realm, when I look at a pandemic claiming the lives of hundreds of thousands of people, when I go through pain, physical or emotional, what do I have to conclude? Well, if there's no God, I have to conclude that this is just the way things are. Some people get lucky, some people get hurt. But if I'm a Christian, I can say this isn't the way the world should be. This wasn't the way it once was. Something is broken. This isn't right. This pain is real. And the Bible says that if we are grieved by the way our world is, the Bible also says that God is grieved. This isn't the way things were. But wonderfully, the Bible also says this. The world we live in is not only not the world it once was, but it's also not the world it one day will be. The Christian faith speaks not of some pipe dream illusion, some spiritual dimension that one day we will go to when we die. But the Christian faith speaks of the recreation of the whole creation. The Christian faith speaks of a day when God will put this broken world right, when there will be no more pandemics, no more lockdowns, no more suffering, no more pain. The Christian faith roots that hope in the future on the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the dead, a historical event that we can investigate and check out for ourselves and look at the evidence for. The Christian faith is no pipe dream. It is a real hope that one day our broken and hurting world will be put right. But more than that, the Bible says something even more profound. Not only is the world we live in not the way it once was and not the way it one day will be, but the Bible also tells us that there is a God who came into our broken and suffering world. God isn't a distant deity, but this God that we speak about came into this broken world and experienced pain and suffering and injustice. As you read the story of the life of Jesus, you see how he experienced rejection, how he experienced loneliness, 
Ultimately, he would experience injustice and torture and death by Roman crucifixion. And the incredible fact of the Christian faith is that we believe that God chose to do that because he is good and because he loves us. Because he was suffering with us, stepping into our shoes, as it were, suffering alongside us. But also the Bible says he was suffering for us. When Jesus died on the cross, he was taking upon himself the root causes and the ultimate consequences of all of our wrong and sin. He was making it possible for you and me who have been disconnected from the God who made us to be reconnected, to be reconciled, to be brought back into a relationship with that God who loves us. In Jesus, we see the goodness of God. We see a God who was willing to give himself for us. Now, that doesn't mean that all of our questions about this unjust and broken world have easy answers. There are many specific questions that I have about things that have happened in my life and to those who I love that I don't have the answers to. And Christianity doesn't guarantee simplistic or easy answers to all of those questions. But what it does say is this. If there is a God who loved me enough to come into this broken world, to suffer with me and to suffer for me and to offer me this hope that one day I can be part of a world made new. The one thing I cannot say about that God is that he doesn't love me and that he isn't good. As a Christian, if I want to know whether God is good, I don't look at the circumstances of my life. I don't turn on the television news. I look at Jesus. I look at what he did for me objectively in history, in his life, death and resurrection. And I'm assured that despite of everything that seems to the contrary, there is a God who loves me and a God who is good and a God whom I can trust. One of the writers of the New Testament in the Bible, someone who suffered a great deal in many different ways, once wrote this. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Paul, the writer of those words, was able to say, if there is a God who was willing to give up Jesus for me, how will he not also, along with him, give me everything that I need? He was convinced in the goodness of God because he was convinced of Jesus. It is in Jesus that we can see that God is good. I wonder, have you come to discover that for yourself? Maybe you have already, but maybe the last year has caused you to question your faith. Can I encourage you to come back to Jesus and see in Jesus and his death for you the evidence of God's goodness and his trustworthiness? Maybe for you, you're not even sure whether you can believe in God. Maybe you've rejected this because of the pain that you have gone through in life. But can I say, in the light of your pain, don't turn away from God, but turn to the God who suffers with you and for you. Let him embrace you. Let him bring you into his love. And let him give you this hope that one day justice will be done and a broken world will be made new and that you can be part of that. Come to trust in this good God for yourself.